Greetings, one and all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to find out who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and leave your predictions down in the comment section below or with a video response. And who knows, your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters. Saitama, the One Punch Man, and Captain Underpants the Waistband Warrior. Which poorly drawn, caped baldy superhero parody will come out on top with the most laughs? Let's find out. This is Universes. Having overwhelming strength is pretty boring. Well, to us it may not be, but to Saitama, it definitely was. All he's looking for is a good fight. He was once a boring salaryman. A boring salaryman with a dream. That dream being able to defeat monsters with a single punch. Be careful what you wish for though, because after three years of intense training, Saitama became just that. 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and a 10-kilometer run every single day led to Saitama becoming the greatest hero and also training all of his hair out. Even when he wanted to take a day off, he stuck with it and earned the power he seeked. But now it seems he's regretting it as he defeats monsters with a single punch, making things way too easy. But with all kinds of new monsters popping up every day, maybe eventually one of them will test his might and get Saitama to use every last thing he's got. Okay, okay, well admittedly, when it comes to what he's got, there isn't a lot. It's mostly just punching. But there are different variations to his punches. There's his normal punch, a very casual blow that's usually enough to take out most enemies in a single shot. Sometimes he'll throw in a chop too. But occasionally, Saitama will throw in a little variety to spice things up, like consecutive normal punches. A barrage of... Consecutive normal punches. These are typically enough to defeat any foe, but eventually someone will come along who can survive one of Saitama's punches, leading him to become serious. He has several moves in his Serious series. First up is Serious Consecutive Sidesteps, in which Saitama jumps from side to side so fast it creates after images. Then there's the Serious Table Flip, in which Saitama flips over the entire battlefield, the Serious Headbutt, which pretty much explains itself, and finally the Serious Strike also known as the Serious Punch. He labels this as his finishing move and uses it whenever he gets bored and just wants to end a fight. I mean, for a superhero who can defeat monsters with a single punch, he has to be pretty strong, right? That's correct, as Saitama with the Serious Table Flip was able to lift the entire Monster Association base, which was the size of City Z. That's right, Saitama can casually lift the weight of a city. Saitama's punch at full power is enough to turn a mountain into a wasteland without even touching anything. Just imagine if it actually did hit something. I mean, his Serious Punch is already enough to split the atmosphere when deflecting one of Lord Boros' attacks, an attack that, according to a data book, could obliterate a star. Now that's pretty neato. Saitama's also stated he could destroy the planet on multiple occasions, implying it's something he could casually do. I mean, he is strong enough to survive hits from Boros in his planet buster form, and getting kneed to the moon at light speed. Saitama was then even able to jump right back down to Earth not too much later at relativistic speeds. I don't know how on Earth he finds all this stuff boring. I mean, Captain Underpants seems to be having a good time with his powers. Speaking of Captain Underpants... Faster than a speeding waistband, more powerful than boxer shorts, able to leap tall buildings without getting a wedgie. It's not a bird, a plane, or even an egg salad sandwich. It's Captain Underpants, the Waistband Warrior. Created by George Beard and Harold Hutchins in a comic book, Captain Underpants was sent from his doomed planet under Panty World to Earth to become a superhero. But what he didn't know was that he'd have a real-life equal. 
You see, George and Harold had a strict principal known as Mr. Krupp, whom they hypnotized into thinking that he was indeed their comic book character. At first it was just some middle-aged guy running around in his underwear, but after a confrontation with some alien lunch ladies, Mr. Krupp ended up drinking superpower juice and actually gained the powers, abilities, and stats of their comic book character. Well, of course he has all the generic superhero abilities. He can fly, he has super speed and super strength, and he can slingshot an infinite supply of underwear from his utility waistband. You know, typical hero stuff. Wait, did I just say utility waistband? Okay, I have no idea how this works or how he fits all this stuff in his undies, but pushing a button on his underwear can pull out several different weapons. There's the slingshot underwear I just mentioned, the toilet paper of justice which acts like a rope or a grappling hook but is actually weak to Salisbury steak sauce, and a tiny toilet for spraying water at his foes. That's right, Discord server, tiny toilet is finally in universes. Are you happy now? By the way, go join my Discord server, link in the description below. Ahem, aside from these powers, though, Captain Underpants does have a weakness. Well, spray starch, obviously. But since he is under hypnosis as a superhero, there's obviously a way to break him out of it. While the snapping of fingers is what turns him into Captain Underpants, some water on the face or head will turn him back into Mr. Krupp. But oh man, when he's Captain Underpants, he can do some pretty incredible things. Let's start with his origin story. Now, if you remember, Captain Underpants as a baby was launched into Earth from his home planet under Panty World, which George and Harold confirmed is located in a galaxy far, far away. I'll take it from here. Even if we lobe all this distance to being right outside our own galaxy at 100,000 light years away, and since he survived the travel without the need of food or water, the time span and distance would mean that Captain Underpants would have had to have smacked into the Earth with at least two tenatons of force. Two tenatons may seem small, but that's actually enough to destroy a dwarf star. Shoo, shoo, get out of here, crazy robot! <laughs> Who is that weirdo? This isn't some one-time Superman thing either. Captain Underpants is on the level of Captain Blunderpants, who was powerful enough to destroy the planet, and he's superior to Super Diaper Baby and Diaper Dog, who were strong enough to push the entire planet Earth. Captain Underpants and several other characters in his verse have flown to Uranus and back in short periods of time, some even as fast as 15 minutes, making them several times the speed of light. Why do they like Uranus so much, though? Eh, I'll ponder it after this. Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Hey, what's going on everybody? Corn O'Keefe here. As the title implies, bringing you another universe's prediction. We got Saitama versus Captain Underpants. Now, I know I made one originally, but I wanted to edit the video, put some stuff on the screen. I'm still going with Saitama all the way because of recent news. A new guidebook does imply and state that Boros in his restricted armor state is actually a planet buster and his ultimate attack is actually star level. Formidable enough to destroy a star. Um, so Saitama going off that would at least be star level. Now it doesn't specifically say what size star Boros can destroy, so if we say it's just a normal size star, then I would say Saitama would be large star level. And we do know he is faster than light. His jump from the moon to the earth was actually relativistic to light speed, but we do know he was actually suppressed. We don't know how suppressed, but we do know he had to use more than just 1% of his power. But he was suppressed nonetheless, so it is safe to say he's above light speed and he's possibly large star level, yes. He's very durable. He survived the kick to the moon from a star level fighter, meaning Boros. Now Captain Underpants, he actually does have abnormal strength. Some might consider it superhuman strength. Same with his durability, you might consider it superhuman durability. He has the ability to fly. Now, I'm not sure on how fast he can fly, but going off what I've seen and heard recently, it is pretty freaking fast. It is relatively fast in his own right. Now, he does have the ability to overcome spray starch as well. He has his wedgie power, obviously. 100% cotton powered vision. And obviously he's some sort of a gag character. He does have his moments and his feats. I'm sure we all know. 
But altogether, folks, I gotta go with Saitama. I feel like he's gonna edge out. I do like this concept. I like the idea of the match. We got a gag versus a parody. Saitama being the parody, Captain Underpants being the gag. I feel like the parody Saitama is gonna edge out in this. He's at least star level, and he's above the speed of light, going off feats, scaling, and the new guidebook for Boros and Saitama. But he did have to get serious. That's why we know he did use more than 1% of his power. But all together, folks, I gotta go with Saitama for the next universes. Let me know what you think down below. As always, have a great one. Peace. Saitama vs. Underpants. I think this is really close. Saitama has strength and durability, since he can defeat and take his from Boros as star level being. Um, Underpants has speed and arsenal, since he can fly with planets to planets in a few seconds, and has, he has some weapons. Well, they still have some advantages over each other, but really slight edge. Saitama has experience and intelligence, maybe skills because he has been trained before and not be like baby, like underpants, at least. Well, underpants has mobility, so he can fly. Ability, he has some toon force. And range, see he has a, the tank that can shoot range attacks. Well, but those are really, really minor. Um, but I think Saitama will win here. First, Saitama. Will definitely take everything. Underpants can throw at him. Even his arsenal can just be destroyed by one punch man easily. Then is that one punch man will definitely take the fight seriously than underpants too. Since he just when he's fighting robot, he just playing with it, just like blocking his lasers instead of punch him down something like that well the last one is that one punch man has these four similar to underpants if not even stronger than him like boros a star level being is and also he has taste he has Win against other superheroes in his universe. That one, that even underpants can't even face against them. So I think One Punch Man will win underpants, but just only slightly. And the results are in. The winner is. Captain Underpants, tra la la! Oh, 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 I get the Uranus thing now. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Now you can hate me all you want, but I personally do not believe Saitama is star level due to it being debunked and a mistranslation, inconsistent, never confirmed by one or Murata, but I will allow it and include it anyways to prove that even if it were true, the Wedgie Warrior still claims victory. While it is true that Saitama is stronger due to him being full on star level while Captain Underpants is only dwarf star level, not only is that his only advantage in this fight, but it's also not big enough of a difference to change the outcome. Saitama took took damage in his fight against Boros when he was still in his planet buster form. Meanwhile, Captain Underpants was A-OK, -okay, taking a full-on dwarf star level impact as a baby, making his durability much, much higher. And again, that's even if we lowballed Captain Underpants' feet by placing his planet right outside our own galaxy, even though George and Harold confirmed it was in a galaxy far, far away. Then there's Captain Underpants' several trips to Uranus and back, making him several times the speed of light, far better than anything Saitama has done with his relativistic feet. 
fleets. Captain Underpants also has the mobility advantage by default, considering he can fly, the arsenal advantage with all the weapons in his utility waistband. I think you've heard enough evidence by now and get the point. But just in case, let's add an extra cherry on top. Something that doesn't add much to the overall results, but still makes it taste so much sweeter. Their personalities. Yes, Captain Underpants is like, super dumb, but he always goes after his foes at 100% full power, eager for justice and wanting to save the day as fast as possible. Meanwhile, Saitama does things casually and will test his opponents. Think about it, Saitama who was damaged by Boros in his Planet Buster state, testing Captain Underpants who was casually Dwarf Star level as a baby, and allowing him to fight at 100% full power. Considering dwarf stars are still large enough to fit millions of planets, this wouldn't end well for Saitama. While the One Punch Man may be stronger, Captain Underpants' durability, speed, and larger arsenal gives him the win. The Waistband Warrior has the edgy while Saitama gets a wedgie. The winner is Captain Underpants. <laughs> Come sidekick! We gotta stop him! Why? <laughs> Get ready for the next battle! No need for talk. Let's do this. Know that I am the top fighter in the universe!